Don't Ask, Don't Tell by Ms. Chunks, Chapter 4, Knocking Ochako on Her Ass. Bakugo tries out his newly patented meteor strike move a few more times, leaving some notable craters in the training area. But eventually, he doesn't stick his hand out to Ochako and give that same determined again that she's starting reacting to like a dog sticking out its paw. Instead, Bakugo is shaking out the last landing like a born hunter, spreading a cloud of concrete dust that's almost ethereal in the last light of the day. The way he starts pumping his fists sends a tingle of anticipation down Ochako's spine, because without saying anything, he's getting ready for a fight. Their fight. Ochako follows suit, stretching and even starting to bounce on the balls of her feet in anticipation. At the start of this training session, Ochako and Bakugo agreed to a certain order of events, and though it's evident that they both know what's coming next, it's still a little odd when Bakugo's first comment on the subject is, This won't take long, you know. <laughs> Though Bakugo issues this as a simple statement of fact, Ochako has a weird thought about the importance of context to a line like that. Somehow the conclusion of her meandering journey is to reply, Then we'll find out how long I can last. There is something that sits in the corner of Bakugo's mouth right before he launches himself at her. A curl to the corner of his mouth that's not a snarl or a scowl or any kind. It's almost... If Ochako didn't hesitate to apply such concepts to Bakugo, like he could be having fun at the prospect of knocking her on her ass, as he put it. Ochako knows Bakugo's opening move set, because who doesn't? and dodges the infamous right hook by an absolute whisker. She gets approximately two moves further through the exchange before Bakugo steps a foot behind hers and shoves her over like they're children in a playground. Sticking to the no quirks rule, Ochako lands less than comfortably on her butt, but in true fulfillment of Bakugo's promise, but in defiance of it, she gets right back up after. It'll take more than that to keep her down. Bakugo says nothing, but this time appears to be waiting for Ochako to move first. His hands dive into his pockets as Ochako gets to her feet, but she knows better than to doubt anything but his total awareness and the reactions to back it up. She goes with a couple punches, each of which Bakugo knocks away with a blow from his shoulder like colliding with a shopping cart loaded up with bricks. Bakugo isn't the biggest or tallest in their class, but he's got plenty of muscle and hits without parrying back his strength. So it hurts. But this is what Ochako doesn't get enough of. Being pushed to her physical limits. Fighting someone who is this much better than her without holding back is what Ochako needs to grow. Gaining the experience she'll need to go up against villains in the real world. Fights that Ochako has to be ready for. After all, a few of Bakugo's punches are hardly going to set her back, and Ochako falls easily into the habits set by their match in the first sports festival. She picks herself up and throws herself into the wall that he is again and again. The biggest difference this time is the contact. Bakugo hadn't allowed Ochako to touch her back then, and after today's discovery, Ochako wonders what might have happened if the compatibility of their quirks had been discovered all that time ago. Not that Ochako is actually landing anything on Bakugo. It's just that with the use of their quirks off the table, he hasn't got to worry about letting them touch. This time, Bakugo's unhesitant in his handling of Ochako, throwing her around like a ball to play catch with. Finally, Bakugo's promise is paid in full when Ochako can no longer get back up. If she could, then she would have gone again for him. It's not all that bad, mostly exhaustion from running such a relentless barricade into Fort Bakugo. She'll be alright in a few minutes, but for now she's quivering on the ground and frustration 
at the gap between where El Chaco is and where she wants, needs to be. Then, in an unexpected turn of events, Bakugo's hand arrives in front of her face. Ochako's first instinct is to reach out and touch her fingertips to it in order to activate her quirk. But by the time she's lifted a trembling hand, she's recognized the gesture for what it is. Bakugo is offering to help her up. Ochako wonders what could have possibly inspired the thought in Bakugo's head but then remembers the glimpses she caught of Bakugo with his actual friends rather than begrudging acquaintances. There are times when Ochako has detected traces of a softer... No, that wasn't right. A less... Bakugo side of Bakugo. He has a hair trigger and a temper like a live volcano. And Ochako doesn't think he's terribly social, even without the mild deep attitude problems. But Bakugo's not heartless. And at the end of the day, Bakugo's also her classmate, ally in more battles than she cares to count for two years of high school, and a teenage boy to boot, so perhaps it isn't all that strange. Maybe the warm feeling Bakugo's gesture gives Ochako tilts her view a bit. Or maybe it's being hit all those times because after Ochako takes a stealing breath and the dizzy spell is passed, she finds it terribly natural to respond to Bakugo with some straight shooting. Show me how, then. It's more than what Ochako bargained for at the start of this, the jump from practice to coaching. But there's not a person in their year, maybe even the entire school, who couldn't learn a thing from Bakugo about hand-to-hand -hand combat. Ochako has seen this time and time again, and there's nowhere else Bakugo is more at home than in the midst of a fight. Because it's true that heroes come in all sorts, and they're all equally valid, but Bakugo is a kind that doesn't come along all that often. So it goes without saying that Ochako would be excited to learn even a little of what Bakugo has made his second nature. Whether he shares the inclination to do that is another question, and the look Bakugo gives Ochako is not especially promising. He is scowling, which is for granted, but this pouty frown topped by the sharp lines of his brow in Ochako's loosely formed opinion is merely Bakugo's thinking face as he considers her proposition. Next time. Ochako establishes herself as a bad trope by saying, Really? In that happy-go-lucky way again. It's hard not to when Bakugo surprises her at every turn. Bakugo gives Ochako another of those accusingly puzzled looks like it's an insult for her to be beyond his understanding. You got a problem about doing this again? No, of course not. I'd love to. I mean... Ochako realizes too late she doesn't have anything else to say and ends up hanging with her mouth open for a moment longer than is not awkward. Bakugo is giving her that famous intense stare and Ochako makes an attempt at speaking rather than let the silence become crushing. That'd... That'd be nice. You're weird. Bakugo uses his tone of absolutes again, such that Ochako is in no doubt whatsoever that he is exactly and completely right. Meet me back here Sunday morning, okay? Bakugo doesn't ask anything that's unimportant to him, like whether Ochako is free or if she wants to devote their only day off to getting ordered around by him. Those considerations make no difference to him, because it's boiled down to a simple question of whether she'll be there or not. Nothing else matters. Okay, Ochako answers like it's more ordinary than it is, when in reality, this is about as normal as a pack of penguins showing up to a beach bar at... But then stranger things have happened in this quirk-filled world that they can hardly keep up with. Bakugo signals the end of their session by kicking aside some rubble to collect his things. You know he says casually as he's pulling on a hoodie, as if this is a locker room breakdown. 
It's not that big of a deal. Ochako trips into what is an unintentionally mimicking tilt of her head. What isn't? Doing this together is Bakugo's impressively vague answer, followed by a brisk, So don't disappoint me. It's something Ochako wasn't worried about until Bakugo says it, and only after he's walked away does she realize why. Being able to disappoint Bakugo means he expects something of her. Ochako expects that to be the last she sees of Bakugo after he storms away. But when she reaches the exit of the training area, he's already hanging back by the gate. As if he thought of something and, and waited for her. It's predictably not what she expects. Hey, Bakugo starts like he doesn't need Ochako's name even though he knows it. Don't tell anyone at school about this. Bakugo looks so direly serious it undermines Ochako's instinct to think she must have heard him wrong. Uh, really? Why? Ochako juggles the question as if Bakugo might like to pick and choose among them. I don't want those nosy bastards snooping around while we're still working stuff out. Bakugo replies with utter calm for words that might be taken a really weird way out of context. Not that it seems to bother him. Especially not that try hard- You mean Deku? Ochako hops in before Bakugo can get the words out, and he seems indignant that she's snatched the satisfaction so openly from his lips. Why would it be a problem if people know about us, uh, doing this? Ochako is pretty confused as to why she's being asked to keep secrets, but Bakugo doesn't seem to be in the mood for explanations anymore. Just keep your dumb mouth shut. In case you forgot, Ochako starts with a blast of vindictive energy, getting a full Bakugo scowl for her trouble. Earlier today, you shot yourself through a building, spent all of class staring at me, and then asked me to meet you after school in front of everyone. Ochako sets her hands on her hips, fixing Bakugo with a beady look. I'm going to get asked about it, so what do you expect me to say? I don't know. Whatever the fuck you want, Bakugo snaps. Just don't spill what I'm trying to do with you with your quirk. Ochako feels herself frowning. Not so sure this ill-fated project is going to work out in the long run. Not when it's still what Bakugo's doing with her and not them as a real partnership. Is it really that awful to need me for something? Get your head out of your ass. That is not it. So what is it? Ochako realizes too late she's pushing just a bit harder than she should. This doesn't go down well with Bakugo. Not the boy with the hair trigger, who has gone from his regular angry to explosion murder king in the blink of an eye. Except what he bellows at Ochako is a bit off his regularly scheduled abuse. What we have could be incredible! Bakugo barks like a dog, guarding a well-cooked pork chop. The part of Ochako that would usually fight back is stunned to mute at the nature of Bakugo's outburst. So no flare of temper overtakes her tongue on this occasion. Instead, she looks right at Bakugo, teeth clenched and glaring like he's furious that it's her he's got to do this with. But he's still called it incredible. You really think so? Bakugo scoffs like he can't believe Ochako doesn't see what he's become so quickly fixated on. It's nothing right now, he says before Ochako mistakes Bakugo for being too nice. We need to do a lot more work before it'll be worth shit. It's okay not to be perfect at something right away. For you, maybe, Bakugo grunts. If you start blabbing now, everyone will get curious and expect to be impressed. Bakugo is looking straight at Ochako, and she tests the feel of his ever-present Baku aura. That spiky feeling of being near him that feels like 
creeping past an extremely hostile animal growling in a very narrow hallway. We can talk about it when we know what the fuck we're doing. Bakugo sounds like he's negotiating for a treaty. And Ochako doesn't plan to test it, but she wonders what he would do if she refused the terms. She's no want or need for a war with Bakugo, because attitude or not, they're still on the same side. Fingers snap in front of Ochako's face, and she looks up to see the, the swirl of near-black thunderclouds in Bakugo's when she doesn't affirm him on his preferred timescales. Namely, right goddamn now. Okay? Okay, Ochako agrees with a slightly put-upon sigh, just to be sure he understands she's doing what Bakugo doesn't. Compromising. If it's that important to you, Bakugo makes his signature sound again, the periodic before stomping away. Although Bakugo is the last person Ochako would imagine expecting something from her, much less binding her to secrecy about this supposedly incredible thing between them, it's not a feeling she hates. Being recognized not for her personality, but because of her ability as a hero, because together they can do something that Bakugo deems so valuable, makes Ochako feel worthy too. After all, deep down, Ochako figures most friends train with her because they like her company, and not because of the challenge she presents. There's nothing wrong with that, of course. But it's nicer to feel wanted as a training partner for something else. Even, or let's face it, especially, by Bakugo. Though it would be easier if Bakugo didn't want things kept secret. A problem Ochako has to start dealing with sooner rather than later. She's barely been back at the dorms for an hour. Sitting with Sue, trying to review their notes for English class and not getting all that far with it. By the way, Ribbit, how'd it go with Bakugo? Sue slips in all too casually. Oh, fine, Ochako replies lightheartedly, a feeling not shared by her aching, tired muscles. And? Sue isn't going to be fooled. What did he want? We just, um, uh, Ochako stalls, and then stalls some more. Well, I, it's hard to say what we did. Sue looks supremely unconvinced. It is? He, I mean, Bakugo doesn't really want me to talk about it just yet. Ochako doesn't mean to mumble or sound bashful and guilty yet. She somehow manages all of them. That sounds pretty odd. Sue's eyes narrow. He didn't want to do anything weird, did he? Bakugo? <laughs> Oshako's voice reaches an alarming pitch. No way! It, it's fine! I swear! Oshako tames her voice, but it still squeaks here and there. Just some totally normal stuff that I can't talk about right now. Sounds fake, but if you say so, Sue reverts to her steadfast deadpan. Are you coming to Yamamo's study session on Sunday? Of course I'll... Ochako catches herself too late. Oh, no, I can't. Ochako remembers her commitment just a moment too late. It slipped my mind and I... I sort of made other plans. Doing what? Sue's straightforwardness is a blessing most of the time. Not this time. Well, um, I'm seeing Bakugo again. Sue gives Ochako a are-you-for-real look that makes already rosy cheeks flush even pinker. He asked, she cheeps. What was I supposed to do, turn him down? Well, you can do whatever you want, Ochako. Sue replies quite fairly. I wasn't judging, it's just a little unusual because of, well, you know, Bakugo. I know, I know, Ochako emphasizes better than anyone. 
It's not like I have any more idea of what's going on in his head. I don't know about that, Ribbit. Sue is thoroughly distracted from homework, and Ochako's really going to miss that study session with Yamumo. Sometimes I think you understand Bakugo best of all of us. No way, Ochako insists. The only thing I know for sure about Bakugo is he finds me annoying. Doesn't Bakugo find everyone annoying? Sue counters. The difference is he's tolerating the way he's annoyed by you. Barely, Ochako sighs. At least for now, Bakugo is putting up with a hefty amount of undisguised irritation for the sake of exploring the combination of their quirks for combat. Not that Ochako is allowed to talk about it. And he calls me weird. This is addressed more to herself. But Ochako's companion is too sharp to miss much. You know, Sue says thoughtfully, finger propped to her jaw as she runs that direct line from her head straight through to her mouth. If you keep hanging around Bakugo and being all secretive about what you're doing, people might get the wrong idea. It's true that one-on-one -on -one training together is almost as good as dating for much of their student body, but Ochako tries not to think about it in the same mind frame as her own perfectly legitimate one-on-one -on -one training with Bakugo. Ochako laughs. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Me and Bakugo. She looks at Sue to confirm she's joking and is a little unnerved when she isn't. But it's Bakugo. Obviously we wouldn't. He wouldn't. You know. But it, it's Bakugo. I didn't say I believed it, Sue pointed out. Just that it might look that way to some people. Crazy people, Ochako insists. Besides, I'm sure Bakugo will get fed up of tolerating me before it comes to anyone thinking that. What kind of things were you two doing again? Sue teases. Maybe. Um, you know, general stuff. Ochako considers as she says it, and there's nothing about anything she said that can't be twisted into some awkward conclusion and feels her face warming again. I'm making it sound worse, aren't I? A little, Ribbit, Sue replies. But if you say there's nothing funny going on, I believe you. Thanks, Sue. Ochako says warmly. I'm really glad you said that, because... Could you not mention this to anyone else? You realize... That I just made it sound even worse, Ochako finishes for her, peeking out from a gap between her fingers as she rests her palms over her face. You don't have to tell me. It's a lot of trouble for something Bakugo's calling nothing. At least right now. But Ochako knows for all the hassle. She doesn't want to lose this chance. I suppose. Bakugo's such a hot shot. Most of us would say yes to one-on-one -on -one time with him. Sue considers. As she bounces her finger thoughtfully against the center of her lips. Shame about his personality. Sue has a terrible habit of being right. And this is no exception. It's just that Ochako isn't usually so reluctant to stomach the truth. I sure hope I don't end up regretting this. End of chapter four. Penny here. This episode has been sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, and Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place.